Well, this is a first, doing a podcast style, kind of like Oprah, which I have to tell you just a short story because we got to keep it short. So first of all, since uh, my hubby is back there being the producer for me right now, and, and there he is, not, not doing his job very well, are you? So anyway, welcome to In Your City Show podcast. I am your host, Kelly Lamb. Usually I have this hot hunk next to me at our shows. We travel around bringing experiences to you so that people can engage and enjoy their city. And that's what we do. We've been to art events. We've been to Spirit of St. Louis Airport, to their air show, all kinds of fun things. So it's really fun to be able to be here live at Become, which is just an incredible event. So the funny thing is, my husband, who I always say is a chick in a guy's body, who needs a best friend when I got him. So... He's like the only guy that's in the magazine, which is hilarious. So there he goes. But do you notice the suit that I'm wearing? Okay, so we're on this stage right now. Do you need me to get it? I got you. So I said hi. All right, so this suit that I'm wearing, I bought to do this tape that we did and, and do this video, but I kept the tickets on it. And I was so glad when Amy was up here and she said, just buy it because I bought it and um, we were able to make our mortgage payment still but <laughs> I left it I'm one of those girls so you're really gonna know who I am right now I left the tickets in the suit because I thought you know what it's so expensive maybe I'll just take it back after we take the pictures but I always had this dream of being on stage in a white suit Oprah style which of course my dream did have Oprah and I was on TV but <laughs> Like Amy said, it's okay. I'll get through this right now with them. So I'm so glad to be here with you. And some of the nuggets uh, Yolanda had said, um, what she said up here, oh, I'm, what I do is make sure I take a takeaway when I'm at an event. So here's my takeaway. I'm, I cut the tags off, I'm keeping the suit. And nobody, I was the one that got to sit next to Yolanda. And my husband always says, every woman needs an intro song and a personal fan. She has a personal fan. <laughs> There's a fan on that table. Those are the things I take away from these impressive, you know, inspiring events right now. So, so, oh, here they go. Thank goodness I have my notes just in case here. So what I'd love to do right now, I want to make sure that you know, I absolutely love supporting community and I love supporting women. That's what it's all about. It's one woman helping one cause, one person at a time. And that's what you all do. And we're all here for a reason, and it's to be inspired. So I'm so glad that I can bring In Your City show to you all right here live on stage, Oprah style, in my suit that I now have to keep. <laughs> so something that is a movement of mine that I really want to get going and really spread the word. And I hear everybody talking about it, Monica, know your value and, and, and knowing who you are. And that's why I think a lot of us are here is because we, we sometimes need to really understand who we are, what we're about, because we are so living everyone else's life all the time, everyone else's purpose, our kids, our husband, our, our spouse, our partner, whoever it is, we're living for them. And usually, not for ourselves, And something I've struggled with, there's been many faces of Kelly for those that have known me, which so many faces in here, I've had the pleasure of either interviewing on radio or having you in the magazine, like Yolanda on the cover, Monica on the cover. Oh my gosh, uh, Amy was on our cover last May. And then so many, I'm sure you know in here who I've put you as stories and many more coming up. So I have the pleasure of getting to meet people all the time. And sometimes as we do, we want to live other people's purpose all the time. And we were having lunch and I told, um, what's your name again? <laughs> told Angel um, that I said, you know, I, I want to be me. I really want to be who I am and be authentic. And I want to say to you, be you, live your purpose. Don't let anybody take that away from you. So with that, speaking of be beautiful, I would like to bring my co-host for today up to the stage, Angel Megasano. What a name, Angel. I love it. Look at you, such beauty, such radiation. So I had That's the awesome. pleasure of meeting Thank Angel. Thank you so much. 
So silly, sit down. <laughs> many, many years ago, and then here we are today we on are. the stage. I've joined, I'm, a, I'm an actual member. You are. Like, I paid <laughs> to be a member, all right? Because so. it's worth it, and she's worth it. <laughs> so have a seat. Thank we are, we are on you. In Your City Show podcast, Thank and you, you are my me. co-host. So we want to really dig in really, really quickly um, because what I want people to do, a lot of people know you. You're the, you're the face and the person behind LBB. You have grown something that's so magnificent, so powerful, and so inspiring. And so I just really want to ask you, I'm asking everybody to really be them, be you. When I ask you that, Angel, and I say to you, who are you? You know, people see you, the face, in your beautiful pink suit, but who are you? Well, I may not be what you think I am. I don't know what you think I am, but I'm probably not that it. I'm probably not that. Uh, what I am is I'm a visionary. I'm someone who sees in pictures and I can see what should be the way I want it. And I'm a creator and I'm, I can execute at what I create. So th that's who I am at the core of me. Yeah. You know, and I have a lot of hats that I wear. Oh yeah. We all, but, women, but we get who, to do that, don't we? That's who I am. You know, and I think I, for a while I struggled with that question, who am I? because I wanted to present what I thought you might want to see. Right? Exactly, right? How many of us do that? I think, I think, as women, a lot of us do it, unless we're very evolved, yeah. like Taylor Thompson. <laughs> <laughs> Get us a spreadsheet, Taylor. But it really is that simple for me. I'm a visionary, and I'm a creator, and I'm a getter done. Yeah, mm -hmm. I like that yeah. a lot. And I'm getting to know you more and more, which is so fun because a lot of times in the business world, we're so busy doing the business stuff that sometimes we don't get to sit down and really find out about that inner person and that real person behind all the beauty that you're radiating up here right now. So Yeah, you know, we had a moment just this week where we were together at a very fancy event that we were so excited to be at. Mm -hmm. And we got to be in the Cardinals baseball players um, locker room and the dugout and out on the field. And when I got home and I was flipping through my photos, I saw a picture of Kelly sitting there laughing with my friend Jeannie. And I sent it to her and I said, this is my favorite memory from the night, watching you laugh with your friend. Yes. And it meant so much, didn't it? It did mean so much. I lost my smile for a minute because of just recently with the passing of my mom. So seeing Monica's mom up here and um, it, it can take it out of you. So it's really wonderful to be able to share my heart and be but, here but right that's, now. That's it, right? That's the yeah. simplicity of it. The simplicity right. of why we're here today is there's power in experiencing the support of women for women. Absolutely. And uh, the simple act, I didn't know that I, I didn't know, I knew that she had, was mourning her mother, but I didn't know that she had lost her smile. I didn't know that she was having conversations with her husband about that. But I love her enough to say, this is what I saw in you today. And it was the best part of my day. Aww. But you know what's so great about that is when I asked her if she had any photos, she said, I was in the moment so much that I forgot to take pictures. How many times, what a great place today, to be. Today, I don't have any photos of today because, because I've been in the moment all day. You know, we're selfieing it up a storm and I have to take like a hundred before one looks right. So I just give up at that point. I There's a filter for that. Yeah. All right, so we know who you are. What led you, and I know we don't have a long time, but where was your heart at that you, um, we had all night, right? Um, what led you? to start LBB and make this event become? And I know that's a big question, but kind of from your heart in a nutshell, where did it come from? I think it comes from being pushed down as a child. Uh, it comes from a place of, all the trauma starts in childhood, right? If oh you don't gosh. know that, get a therapist because they'll, be, <laughs> they'll tell you that it all comes from childhood. Tracy, we got Tracy <laughs> in here, we need her. Uh, but I did, I did realize last year that my why really comes from childhood. I was a competitive dancer and I was very good at what I did because I, I, do, I get it done, right? Yeah. But I realized that as a child, our coaches were actively coaching us to, Come I guess, on. Diss. be mean girl. Yeah, be mean girl. <laughs> um, psych the other competitors out in, in ways like this. Gosh, look at all those people out there, Kelly. Doesn't that make you nervous? 
I, yeah. Gosh, I hope I hope you don't fall coming up the steps, yeah. Kelly. Doesn't that <laughs> no, make that you nervous? Yeah. <laughs> I didn't think about it after we <laughs> talked about it. I'm not going to lie. I was running to the bathroom. I thought, here's my moment. Every, everybody needs a moment of falling up the stairs, right? But I don't recall ever being that way to another person. But certainly if I have that memory, I probably was. So that really is the root of why this was all created, because there's no reason to have that type of attitude when you shift your mind when you rise I rise when you succeed I succeed if I support you you'll support me and there's power in that there's and power I saw that. that so there was a woman uh, who had to leave early and she had came up to give uh, Angel a hug and she said stop it she said smile I won't leave unless I see you smile and so Angel did a fake smile so she could I leave. smiled genuinely yeah. at that woman uh, okay you were trying hard <laughs> I can't lie for you. So anyway, but what it was, her empathy for her, for what this woman is going through, just think of all that she has in her heart and on her shoulders all the time with all of you children. <laughs> you are her children. So she, she has all this empathy. And when she left, she then told me why she had to bring her face back and smile for her. That's a lot. I mean, our, our hearts are so big, and your heart's so big for everybody, and I admire that. I think that's Thank wonderful. You. And you. just you saying what you did about knowing my smile out there, that's, that's incredible. So I appreciate being part of this, and I just love being able to know all of you women and hope to get to meet more of you, shine the light, because that's what Gordon and I do. That's what I've always done is found a way to shine the light on you. My life has not always been perfect. Uh, I've lost everything. I've Things have happened in my life like us all challenges that take us beyond what we think we can get through but you find that light and you find it in other people that help fill you up as we fill your coffee cup and all the things everybody talks about and meeting you and getting to know how you really feel about all these women has been such a privilege so with that angel I'd like to ask you what you would like to say I know you've said a lot just now to them but if there's some words of wisdom or something that you really want a nugget from you, not like mine, which are so shallow to keep a fan with me and you know that kind of stuff, but what's a real nugget that you'd like to say that you hope everybody will remember from being here together at Become? That's a good question. Um, I'm gonna start my answer with saying, I'm surrounded by an extraordinary group of women all of the time and they're my leadership team and my directors for the organization and if I could just ask them to stand for one moment and be recognized we could not do anything without the ladies in this room so if you're on my leadership team can you please stand loud and proud so true these ladies put their heart and soul into it just as I do and we would not be in this room without them and what I think I'd like to take everybody, uh, have everybody take away is that please do surround yourself with those people who are your cheerleaders, mm -hmm. those people who are going to tell you you're doing great, you know, yeah. and be authentic about it. But they're also the people that are going to say, uh, girl, no, you know, <laughs> like that's a wrong move. So what I would hope that you take away from today is... Find that, pe find that group of people, mm -hmm. find that group of people. In, in the room, all of the people in the room, we're a different breed. We come from a heart of giving. We are the people who serve on PTAs. We are the people who volunteer at church. We're the people who serve on nonprofit boards. We are the people who run the community. And we are the people who build one another up. And so I want you to take that away from here today and spread it because people in your community need to hear you and they need to be validated for their lived experience. So I hope that's what you take away from today. I love that. Thank you. That was great. I should just step down there and let you just take over. So with that, we have exciting news because there are two people that have won the chance to be able to be on the show for a hot second, I think. So that's awesome. I'm going to turn this mic over and have them take the hot yes. seat, okay? So would you like me to introduce the, the, those that won? So, Shelly Snow Porday, I hope I said that correctly. And it's so amazing because just accidentally, we got to meet for the first time, but I had reached out to her and she's actually gonna be in the May issue. We're doing a story on what she's gonna talk about. So then you win today to get to come up here, so welcome. And then the other winner who will be coming up next, you'll be able to meet, is Heather Swan. So welcome to the show, Shelly Snow. Poor day, sorry. <laughs> You're like me, it's Kelly Lamb Montgomery, but 
uh, usually it's Kelly Lamb and everybody goes around with my poor husband and they're like, oh, hello, Gordon Lamb. He's like, oh, come on, that's just not, stop it. Uh, well, welcome to the show. So you're Thank in the you. hot seat Thank now you. on In Your City. So I appreciate you so much being here. And, and um, actually, Angel did tell me, she said, uh, oh, she's just stunning. She's lovely. And, and you, she lived up oh, to her words. Oh, so, well, and you. tall. <laughs> yes. I'm like, hi, Shelly. Yeah. Okay. So... <laughs> And I have heels on. All right, so you are establishing a writing practice, self-publishing, writing as a therapy. You have books that we're gonna be talking about in the story that we're doing for you in the magazine sure, as well. Yeah. Um, you also have, I wish we had an hour because I really want the little nuggets about you before you became this impressive publisher, writing practice, book author, all these wonderful things, but you lived in a castle? No, I did not. Angel. Did somebody say? <laughs> I lived near a castle. Okay, it's... Nothing like being live right now and getting <laughs> false information. <laughs> Way to start it's a rumor. All, I have to, um, you know, edit my near Wikipedia a castle. page or something. I almost... Ha <laughs> so, okay, we so you were near, near one. We'll move on. Dracula's castle oh. in Romania. In which so, castle? Dracula's, Dracula's castle. So it's called Bran Castle. Did you see Dracula? Um... Sure. Do you bite your neck? <laughs> Do you bite your neck? In my, in my dreams, for sure. Yeah, what? I'm a novelist, so. <laughs> That's incredible. Yes. Okay, but there's another one, too. And do you want to talk about where you once were before you are right now where you are? Gosh. Or is that a rumor, too? Oh, wait. <laughs> are you talking about when I lived in Romania overseas? Oh, okay. Yes. All the way back. Okay. We're going all the way back. So we yes, just briefly hit everything, it because then you can tell everybody yes, what you do. Everything does stem from childhood. So one of the things I'm really passionate about now in my current work is that I am a survivor of a childhood religious cult. And I'm passionate about advocating for those who have gotten out of a religious oppression and these types of movements. And so my current work or future work, I should say, because not all of it's published yet, um, is really exploring this passion of mine to raise awareness about um, developing freedom of thought and language around how we can recognize manipulation and coercion in our lives. I mean, you really never know, everybody that you're sitting at at your tables, what somebody near you has gone through or what their life's like. Don't assume, which we were talking about that ugly word, assume. It's the worst thing ever to have in your dictionary because it's where everything goes wrong then. But to think, you know, where you were and where you are now and mm -hmm. what you're doing for others. And actually, you're helping me with my children's book that yes. I am working on. And that's how we got to kind of know each other. Jeannie did a great introduction. And mm -hmm. so here we go. And, and you're part of that. So tell everybody what you do and let them know about your books and your new one that you have as well coming sure, out. Sure, absolutely. So I have a published trilogy. It's called The Tracing Time Trilogy. It is a passion project. It was actually a very, I connected very much with Monica's story because my dad passed away suddenly and the only thing I could do was write to kind of move through emotion. And so I started that as a therapy and I completed a trilogy in 2000, 2019 actually, so right before the pandemic, I released my third book in 2020. It's like before, it, before Christ and, and after yeah, Christ. Exactly. It's like before COVID and after before COVID. Before COVID, after COVID. Um, and so then during COVID, I released a best-selling children's book called The Hug Who Had No Arms. And then oh. throughout, um, just because I felt like COVID made me feel like I couldn't hug people, like I was armless. And so I wrote a sweet children's story about that. And uh, throughout, I have helped people self-publish their work because I believe every person has a story. I highly recommend the journaling practice that has been talked about today because you can start with a word and once you put language around your story, it can make a difference. And so I help people self-publish. Yes. I have some online courses now that I don't have to... know where they can go yes, for that. Yes, yes. Um, you can go to my website. It's thecreativeyou.com. It's the creative, drop the E, and replace it with the letter U. Oh, I know great. it's Make it kitschy. Difficult. I know it's kitschy, but it was really expensive when I was starting my business <laughs> to buy all the words. So <laughs> <laughs> That's not where you should cheap out at, but okay. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> we need to find you, um, but that's okay. Yes. Oh, you can, or you can just go to my name, yes. ShellySnowPortia.com. Find everything, direct links to the other website that will give you my courses. 
to such a pleasure uh, to talk to as well when I met her over the phone and um, and then seeing you here now you're just as lovely in person as you were just speaking on the phone and I think that's such wonderful um, to, to come back and talk about the journaling and what you might do for that finding you being you again finding your purpose I have probably four journals and one of them saved my life it was like mm -hmm. I was writing it at all the time bad stuff this to me and poor me and I'm a victim and, and all that kind of stuff and all of a sudden one day just something came over me and I tore out all of those evil written words that I had written in my journal that's really not the way to journal sorry um, and I started with good words and then if someone gave me a poem or something that meant something I would put it in the pages so they're kind of falling apart now they're everywhere and I've had to start more so oh, that's just that. a great way to heal and really be able to put your words down so I, I have a question before sure. that you um, uh, come off the stage with us and again it's a simple one but with what you're doing what you've been through in life what is the inspirational message that you would like to leave these ladies with? What words would you like to give to them? Um, well, I think that so much of it has been said today, but truly it comes back to trusting yourself and believing in yourself. I don't do um, New Year's resolutions, but at the beginning of every year I choose a mantra. And this year my mantra has been trust myself deeply because on the surface level so often we're like, sure, yeah, okay, I'll go this way, I'll do this thing. But if we take a moment to go deep, and trust ourselves, that inner knowing drives all of us, truly. Do you find that when you come up with a saying or a word or something like that, that it ends up coming in front of you all the time after that? My word is joy, oh, yes. and I can't tell you. And, and what I did is I told myself, no matter what was happening, I knew life was gonna get hard that I had to find the joy to be able to get through it. And I feel like every time I walk into uh, the office building where we have an office for Casey, our creative director, which is wonderful, um, it, it said uh, um, uh, joy on a book and it just keeps happening. Yes. So uh, kudos to you for everything you're doing. Shelly, uh, Shelly Porday. Pordia. Uh, Pordia, sorry. No, it's thank okay. you. Okay, <laughs> we didn't say that ahead of time. Yeah. Thank you so much for sharing oh, your inspiration you. with us and all that you do. Appreciate thank it. Thank, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, everybody. Okay, Heather, run. Heather Swan, you're our winner. Just run to save time. <laughs> run. No, don't run. You'll end up like Amy, and that'll be bad, and we'll have bones broken. <laughs> Price is right. Come on down. Up. Thank you. Look at you, styling. Wow. Way to make me look bad up here with my new suit I got ahead to pay for. Oh, I gosh. had to pay for this one. <laughs> so you're the yarn queen. I am. I'm the yarn queen. You don't. You look like sassy queen to me. <laughs> the yarn. Well, so, we're not your grandma's yarn store. So. Yeah. Yeah. I'm a nana. I'm not your typical nana either. Exactly. I don't think. <laughs> so the yarn queen. Tell. Where the heck did that come from? Besides um, a lot of yarn. It came from a lot of wine. And everything um, <laughs> comes from wine. It came from a, a night of brainstorming with yeah. a really good friend, and uh, I was like, what if I just made my title Yarn Queen? Like, I own the business. Yeah. Why shouldn't I be? You own the yarn. <laughs> exactly. So, um, so I kind of leaned into it, and now I have a lot of fun. I sign I-9s as the Yarn Queen. I sign tax forms when it says, you know, what's your title? Yarn Seriously. Queen. Seriously. Yeah, it's the best. I want to be feeling. the in your city queen. I just want to be yes, a queen too. There you I go. like that. Yes, Gordon, it. call me queen for now on. Okay, exactly. we'll be That's queens all, together. That's the only way I'm going to refer to you. Okay, I like that. <laughs> so you've become the yarn queen. Yes. Tell us what that's about. Um, that was a um, very emotional story. Besides the wine. But <laughs> um, I have wanted to own my own business for years, and I have been in the corporate world for over 20 years. And a couple of years ago, my husband, he attempted to check out, and I told him he was not allowed. Um, he needed to get it together because I needed him. And in that process, I realized I wasn't living out my dream. Your purpose. And I wasn't living out my purpose. Mm -hmm. And I was living out everybody else's purpose. And so I freaked him out and everybody else in my family. And I said, you know what? I'm gonna quit my job, I'm making six figures, I've you know, got all of these great benefits, and I'm gonna quit my job, and I'm gonna start a festival, and I'm gonna open up a yarn shop. Wow. And um, after the initial, like, are you kidding me? Um, it has been the greatest joy of my life in joy. getting There's to 
um, really, my love language is service, and I feel like every single day, I get to serve people in their creative adventures. I get to see what they create, what they make, and I also get to support so many small businesses and small makers that are in the fiber arts world and even beyond. And how do you so, feel about all that right now? How's that? How are you feeling? It is as you're overwhelming saying these words? and it is amazing. It Isn't is the it best. incredible. It's the best. You know your value, like Monica was saying. You let go of what you didn't need, and you're doing what you need to do. What's exactly. your favorite thing you've ever made out of yarn? Um. Oh. Well, I mean, right now I have the sweater. You made on. that? I made the sweater. I'm coming over tomorrow. I had to. I bought. <laughs> um, I, I would make say a pot holder. This the sweater um, is probably one of my favorite things that I Aww, did. So I love that. Yeah. Well, you're absolutely beautiful. So I'd like to ask you then. You know, we know your passion, obviously, behind it. And thank you for being raw and letting people know that you know you you found your way and you weren't afraid to tell everybody about it. And and now you're living your dream, which is that's what we all need to do. We need to break away and live our dreams. So what do you want to say um, to someone out there? We obviously know that you made a big choice to do what you did, and we can tell how it affected you. What do you want to say to somebody that may be in that same position that isn't living their purpose? Um, you have to listen to yourself, and I think something that we don't talk about enough is that when something does not serve you anymore, you have to let it go. Um, when the energy isn't right anymore. There are people I absolutely love and I wish the absolute best for them and I hope that they have all the successes in what they're doing, but our energy never, it, it was no longer working together. And the minute I got in with a group of people and I have started attracting the energy of who I am and what my purpose is, I am experiencing things I never thought were possible right. and not having to do the work for it. Yeah. And so by letting go of those other things, it has made room for so much more in my life. And I'm so Make thankful. Room. I love it. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Thank you so much. Wonderful. Thank you. The yarn queen, Heather Swan. Thank you so much. LBB, Angel. Thank you so much for letting me bring In Your City show here to the Become event. I hope you all enjoy the magazine. You all should have one of ours, either St. Charles County, Chesterfield, or Clayton City Lifestyle magazine. 40,000 homes, the most affluent that we mail to every single month with a new issue for you. And then our In Your City podcast, we usually bring it somewhere you join us. I think it's going to be in my kitchen next month with Alana Fravel doing some cooking in the kitchen. So thank you all very much. I'm Kelly Lamb. And my husband, Gordon, back there. Gordon Montgomery uh, is bringing it to you live. Bye, everyone.